little bit. Amen. Amen. Give it on to the leaders, pastor, the first lady. Thank you so much for letting us be here. I come to you uh, with greetings from Abundant Life Ministries of Gastonia. Thank God for my wife who traveled a long way, my niece who traveled a long way. Amen. Amen. And we're here just to give God a little bit of glory. God, all right. Amen. 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 You heard the scripture, so we're going to change it. We'll stick with the scripture. The scripture says, Genesis 1, uh, tw verse 27, said that so God mm -hmm. created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. He, in the image of God, he created him and made him male and female, and he created them. If you ever been to school, when I was in high school, they had a class called algebra. Come on now. I wasn't very good at it. Let's go ahead and start off with that. I wasn't very good at algebra. <laughs> but in algebra, they, they presented numbers in what was called an equation. In the equation, they took numbers and they put them together with letters. Okay, now you're going to mess me up because I'm having a hard enough time with the numbers. With the numbers. So now you're going to do letters in there, and oftentimes you'll see the letter X. Yeah. They would tell you that in order to complete the equation, you first got to figure out what X stands for. Right. Come on, right. Right. The problem is that, that, that the X was, had an unknown variable. Right. Unknown now you're messing me up because now I got numbers and I got letters and I have no idea what the letters stand for. So if I had to give you a title, if you're writing this down, I want to talk to you this, this evening. I was going to say this morning. You know, I'm a real preacher. I'll talk to you this morning. <laughs> the X represents the unknown. Oh, no. Let me break it down for you. The scripture said it like this. The first thing the scripture says is that so God, I'm going to stop right there. The word so is defined as to go to a great extent. We're talking about X mean X, extent, extent. Watch this. The word extent is defined as to have great length, a scale, measurement, or to go beyond what is considered to be the norm. Yeah. Watch this. The extent of something, the length, the distance, the extra effort of something. This is what God has put into creation. So God created man. So God went to a great extent to create man. Yeah. Well, watch this. He didn't just create man, but he had to put some extra effort into his creation. Yeah. He had to put some detail into his creation. He had to extend the effort in which he created everything else. But when it came to man, it required a little bit more attention. I'm ready to go right now. I need you to understand something that when you're talking about the creation of man, there was some extra effort put into the creation of man because when everything else was created, he said, let it be, and it was so. He didn't take all day when he created the animals. He didn't take all day when he created the fish on the sea. He didn't take all day to put the sun and the moon in the sky. He said, let it be. There it was, and it was good. But when it came to man, the scripture started out, it says, so God, watch this, the extra extent I had to go through to create man. Why? Because man is going to represent me. Man is going to be a reflection of me. So therefore, if I'm creating something that resembles me, I got to take a little bit more time with this thing. If I'm going to create something that's going to reflect my holiness, if I'm going to create something that reflects my perfectness, if I'm going to create something that represents me, I need just a little bit more time. You heard the saying, we save the best for last. Therefore, I got to take my time when I create this man because I need to go to a great extent because it's going to represent me. Yes. Now watch this. Let me tell you how great the extent of God is. Right. We have so many men and women in the world. I don't know how many there are. I looked up once upon a time, but I can't remember how many men or women in the world. But we all look different. Right. My nose is different from yours. Right. My complexion is different from yours. My hair texture is different from yours. Even though in all our different features and characteristics, we still represent and resemble that one same God. Yes. The great extent of God. He had to take his time because I'm getting ready to correct something that has so many different features and variables. It has so many different heights and weights and sizes and all these different things. But even in the difference of it, every one of them is going to represent me. One God. One God. You know artists. You know artists, right? You know artists. Our artist has an art form. Our artist creates something. If you're an artist, you create music. You, you play an instrument. You write songs. You, you're a painter. You're a sculptor or something. You're an artist. An artist creates something. Watch this. When an artist creates something, they don't stop with one thing. Artists create several, many different things. But there's always one piece of an art form that separates the artist from everybody else. That one piece of art, they call it the masterpiece. Watch this. God created many things. You read the scriptures. God created the sun, moon, stars, animals, fish of the sea, birds of the earth. God created many things. And went in wrong with them. Because when he created him, he said, it is good. But when he created man, he had to go to another extent because this is going to be my masterpiece. Man, I need you to understand tonight that every man, woman in this world, you are a masterpiece of God. 
You are God's Mona Lisa. You are God's Eiffel Tower. You are God's creation. You are his masterpiece. And therefore, you're set apart from everybody else. I'm talking to you this evening about X represents the unknown because a lot of people just don't know who they are in God. A lot of people just don't understand who you were created to be. A lot of people don't understand the great extent that God had to go through in his creation of you. A lot of people don't know what it took just to get you here. A lot of people don't understand what it takes just to keep you here. A lot of people don't understand the extent God had to go through to wake you up this morning with activity in your limbs, with a breath in your body. A lot of people don't understand what it took to open doors and make ways for you. A lot of people don't understand what it took for God to breathe into you every single morning and give you health, life, and strength. A lot of people just don't know. But X represents the unknown. It's an X factor going on here. My brothers talked about it earlier. They say it's an exclusiveness going on here. The scripture says in verse 27, so God create man in his own image. Nowhere else in the creation will you find that God created a thing in his own image. Watch this, I'm getting ready to go now. It's a very extreme thing because when you create something, that means it never existed before. That was never here before. So when God created, when he went to a great extent to create something, he created it in exclusiveness. Because you ain't never seen a man before this time. Before this moment in scripture, a man never walked the earth. Now watch this. We got doctors and, 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 and scholars and all these big people. You know, they're teaching uh, universities and all this kind of stuff. They done wrote books about the scripture. They done done all these things. But yet, they still debate on what God looks like. They still trying to debate and figure out because scripture gives us some idea of his hair texture. Scripture gives us some idea of Jesus' skin color. But see, they argue about what God really looks like. But you're trying to tell me that these smart people. These educated people, these people with titles and scholarships and all these things, you trying to tell me they ain't got no mirror at home? You trying to tell me that they can't look in the mirror and see that God created you, created me in his very own image? You trying to tell me that as smart as you are, you don't understand that you are the very exclusive creation of God? You trying to tell me that the exclusiveness of God? Because the scripture tells us that we are the children of God. Amen? Children represent their parents. The creation represents the creator. So I don't care how you try to not look like God. You can't help but to look like God. I don't care how deep you fall in sin because you are his creation. Somewhere down the line, you got to resemble him. Somewhere down the line, you got to look like him. Therefore, we ought to know that we always have a way back to daddy because we always going to resemble him. X represents the unknown. A lot of people just don't know that you are exclusively made by God. A lot of people don't know that you are a chosen generation. That you are a royal priesthood, that you are a holy nation of peculiar people. A lot of people just don't know that you're supposed to show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light because you are exclusive. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go. I got to go now. Men are exclusive. I need you to understand that you weren't created in no other fashion, shape, or form other than by the very hand of God. No other creation was shaped and formed from the dust of the earth by the hands of God. No other creation where God took his time and had an intimate personal moment where he saw your uh, yes, lifeless, yes, yes. breathless body and he got intimate with you and he yes, breathed yes, into yes, your yes, nostrils yes. where it activated your mind, where it activated the blood flow, where it activated your heart pumping, your lungs pumping on time, where it activated you to have the activity of your eyes where you can open your eyes and see your very creation. Nowhere else in scripture was there an intimate, personal, exclusive moment where God breathed into your nostril. Amen. I need you to understand the exclusiveness of the breathing into the nostril. It's an intimate moment. Amen. If you ever been intimate with somebody, you know you got to get close to somebody. Because I can blow on you from a good, I can whoop on from a good little distance. But in order to breathe into your nostrils, I got to be right up on you. I got to be intimate. I got to be close. I got to smell what you had for lunch on your breath. We got to be personal and intimate with God because he was intimate with us in creation. I need you to understand, if you ever get confused about who's for you and who's against you, just see who can get personal with you. Because they have a thing called, you know, CPR. When people have an issue, when they're, they're about to leave here, they have different forms of CPR where you can bring somebody back to life. See, people cool with the chest pump. They'll, they do this all day. This, this, they do this all day. We'll pump chest all day. But be in a situation where you need mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. You gonna find out who really for you and who really, well, I wish the ambulance would hurry up because I'm pumping. But I ain't about to put my mouth on nobody. I'm, about, I'm pumping. I wish the professionals would get here because I'm not about to put my mouth on nobody. But watch this. We're not, we're so, we're so exclu- exclusive with God that we won't get intimate with him when he's already been intimate with us when he breathes inside of everybody's. 
the exclusiveness of God because God is exclusive and, he, and we're talking about the X-Men. X represents the unknown. A lot of people just don't know how intimate you can be with God. Right. How intimate you should be with God because he's already been intimate with you. Yeah. We're talking about the X-Men, the X-Factor. There's an X-Factor going on here. There's an exclusiveness. There's an extent that God has gone to to keep you, to bring you here. There's an investment in time that God has given you. There's an investment that God has given you to keep you here. Even the angels wanted, they said, what is man that you are so mindful of him? Yeah. I'm exclusive. I ain't like nobody else. I ain't like none of his other creations. That's why he takes time out to see about me. Even when I'm wrong, even when I'm doing wrong, even when I'm falling by the wayside. That's why the old folks say he'll reach down and pick you up. He'll reach way down. If he got to reach down and pick you up out of your muck and your mind and play because I'm exclusive. I ain't like nothing else that he ever created. X represents the unknown. If you ever, ever wonder if God was still on your side. You just gotta remember that you're an X-Man. You gotta remember that you're an X-Woman. I'm exclusive and God went to a great extent to create and make me. You got to remember this thing. Because all the times that the world tried to label you as something else. Because we got a lot of X's in our life. Yeah. There's a lot of ex-smokers in here talking about me. It's a lot of ex-drinkers in here talking about me again. It's a lot of ex-gangbangers in here talking about me again. It's a lot of ex-cons in here still talking about me. It's some ex-husbands. It's some ex-wives. It's some ex-this. It's some ex-that. But every time the world tried to label you and put a tag on you, God was exiting out your situation and said, that's not what you want. That's not what I created you to be. And every time they tried to put a label on you, God was exiting out your situation. You want to walk around with a big X on your chest saying, I am an ex-man. I am an ex-woman. I am exclusive because God has created me to be more. God has created me to be greater. And I need you tonight to understand that you are an ex-man or an ex-woman. And I need you to know who you are and who you created to be in God. God bless you. I'm out of here.